welcome uh, the morning after the the game. Uh, two top four teams, Ryan. Um, yep. First half has been on about a bit off air. First half were a bit cagey, a bit end to end, a bit just to one another out kind of thing. I thought. Yeah, we de- we said it. We said it was a stalemate at half time. Um, you know, after that, after that offside goal, which which I just can't see. We're just discussing it. We just can't see how it's offside. Yeah. Even if, if, no. the, the guy in the middle is much further forward than the one that Norwood, um, you know, that he's he's managed to play that ball back to Herbie Kane with. That defender's in front of him, but the one in the middle is even further forward. So I just don't see how it was given offside. I think it was just a really poor decision. I just don't know if he's not looked down the line or. Or what? But it's definitely, it's definitely not Kane that's offside. But you know, so. But other than that, I mean, I did say, I did say to me, uh, to my son, I did say they looked like they played good football this lot. They really did. They looked, they got ball down and played it really well. I and mean, they didn't really trouble us. And I think that's probably testament to the defence playing really well. But mm. they did play, so they, you know, they, they play football the right way. And I think that, as I said previously, I think that when we play against sides that play good football, it brings the best out in us. Um, yeah. But the first half, yeah, KJ, stalemate, two good teams going up against each other, two, you know, two top teams, and th- they were noting it basically while they're at half time. No, I mean, what got me is that the, what I could tell from from Plymouth, uh, from Plymouth 5 they were trying to play in attackers, is that tried, they tried using the width a lot, they tried, you know, with yeah. wings down to other lappers and stuff, and I think tried to push up, probably is. I say informed players, but I think all teams informed. But Williams and Cadden, I think we're trying to pin them back to try and stop that mm-hmm. attacking threat coming down. But I, where I was sat, it didn't it didn't look like offside. But like I've watched it and rewatched it back, and for me, I just I, I, I get where you come from. I, I just can't understand it. And I think even looking at Plymouth players when it were in full floor, I don't think they're really appealing for an offside at time. It was just going, and then all of a sudden. Line or just like put his flank up. I'm thinking it just didn't look it. It it, it felt it looked level, and it must have been a fraction yeah. or what, it must have been something else. But I didn't see, but completely threw me. But it is what it is. It's good to see as well, Ryan. Is that even though that like kind of went against us, we still we didn't drop his edge. We still went on front foot, didn't we? We still took it, took took game to him. Like I said, exactly the same thing, Neil. Same as I said last week with that, that mentality that we've got at the moment that's got to have come from the coaching staff, from Michael Duff and, and the rest of the coaching staff that they've embedded in the team, that that mental toughness that they're not letting it get to them. Like when, when, when we went, when uh, like when I said Portsmouth got that goal back on uh, Tuesday night, the um, and then when when that goal got given offside, we didn't let it bother us. We're just like, it's like, right, okay, brilliant, let's get on with it, let's get on with it. And they just, and they just cracked on and it's, it's just it shows through the entire not just the the, the players but the entire the entire setup that that sort of that mental resilience to just crack on and stick to the game plan and, and just get on with it and if, you know if you everybody sticks to the game plan it's, it's usually going to come out in a positive result for us which it I mean you can't beat three and out against against Plymouth against his, you know promotion rivals is just is just a a fantastic result in it yeah I mean going about results I mean a lot of people. You know, it were a game in doubt, you know, um, and full credit to ground staff people, what were there, you know, who's made it all possible. Um, and like I said, there's been volunteers, there's been staff. Not only have had to deal with, like, East End closure earlier in the week as well, so that got uh, sorted out. So I think it just goes to show what spirit and what, what, what togetherness from that, but it is round club, a different feeling, and that's from the players, the, the coaching staff, uh, the fans in general. You could tell... Something different, something special is happening at Oakwell at the minute, uh, Ryan. It really is. I mean, you've got to say thanks to all the, you know, all the volunteers that came along. I think, I think they got some guys from the uh, Rapid Response um, sponsorship, didn't they, to come down and and plow the snow, uh, plow all the uh, car park and the the effort it must have taken to get uh, get that snow off the pitch. Even though we've got under soil eating, it's still got it. You know, it's still it's not it, it's not on. You can't stop the snow coming down, can it? So they still had to get it off and make sure that the Areas around the ground were that are gritted and safe for the for the fans to come in. So it's been a it was a massive effort to get the game on. So I think we've got to you know we've, we've got to thank them for, for getting on because it because it ended up being such a fantastic game. But yeah, like you said, Neil, it feels like something really special is happening at the moment. Um, I went to that um, that meeting, you know, that meeting there with fans. I think you went as well, didn't you, Neil? Yeah. Um, to that meeting with fans and the guy. Um, sorry, I've forgotten his name, but he he was mentioning something. It says something special is happening at this club at the moment. 
So it's caught co- you're going to be coming along for the ride from so special, and he's you know he's right, you know, because it is that's what it feels like at the minute. Feels yeah, like I think. Uh, yeah, and I think I think that marketing block. I think John, we call him, he's going pretty new, yeah. and he he was said that he said you can tell there's some something different. He, he understood what went off previously and coming into this season, you see, can see potential in that there. So I mean, yeah. just going back to. To game, like I said, there's, there's something special happening. Nil nil at half time. Possibly it could have been one note up, but again, yeah. what what will you take on substitution? I mean, I didn't think Devante called it a shocker, but I think, and I think it's been alluded to somewhere on social media that you know it's probably getting a bit you know fatigued or whatever Devante called because it, it seems to be just a just a bit off at pace. I don't know. It, I think is it because it caught it when Rooney sent it down. <laughs> at pace? What were you talking about? Was it a good call? I mean, obviously it it proved its worth. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it was a surprise because he's he's been loyal to um, uh, to Devante, hasn't he, Michael Duff? He's been, he's been, he's played him the majority. He's been he's been his main striker through the majority of the whole season. Um, you know, with other strikers partnered alongside him, so he must be doing the right things in training um, for mm. him for him to do that. So. I was surprised when he come off at half time. Was it? He, I would pr- he'd probably suggest he might have had a little niggle, or he might have a bit of fatigue, or or was it that Duffy weren't happy with those two decisions? Because there were two times when he broke free, when we got a really good break on, and he just made that. You know, the one where he went too long and got tackled, and there was that one where there were two, there were two to the right hand side, one to the left hand side, and he just played it straight down through the middle to nobody. So whether that were a, whether that whether Duffy were upset with that or not. Um, he's probably not because he, he he doesn't seem to get too much upset with too upset with lads when they make a mistake. Um, mm. But I mean, you know, I think what has come on did a good did a good job. So you know, we got three goals in the second half, so it turned out to be a good decision. And I suppose before we get to it, three goals in the second half. I mean, I mean, first minute at second half, oh god, my my heart went oh, god. And ball went through, and I'm like, oh, you are joking. But Ish did again, stood, make yeah. sense all big and. I, we need to sign him up, I think, me, like, and... Absolutely. I, I thought I it... Mean, absolutely. Yeah, mate, go on. Sorry, sorry, I'll let, I'll, sorry Neil, I'll let you finish, go on, sorry. Yeah, and uh, I think it was just one of them unfortunate things, I don't know why it happened, the ball just sent to be go, go straight through, you know, past Mads, everything, it just went to, uh, one ball through, and then Ishtar came out, made it big, and... Well, pulled off what I think. I mean, if it, if it if it had been a no, nil nil, it'd have got my man at match. I think he's dead for, just for yeah, that absolutely. alone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because see, the, the mistake by Mads was he tries to control it. He's, he's like got his feet together and he kneels mm. down as almost if he's trying to stop it with his shins. And he missed it. And it's uncharacteristic because other than that, Mads had a brilliant game. Yeah, he did. Some of the, yeah. some of them last ditch tackles he put in he, that were absolutely fantastic and getting a goal as well. It was a you know proper captain's performance. I think he just misjudged the flight of the ball and he just he started trying to stop it and he just went right the downside of him. Mm. But you know, let's fair, let's 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 have it like that. Uh, you know, Plymouth striker should be doing better there. But you know, if there's the right thing, he's really, really quick, isn't he? He's deceptively quick. He's yeah. he's quick with his distribution and he he's quick off his line. The amount of times he come through um uh, during the game as well to clear the ball when they when they were through, you know, like almost like a sweeper. Um, but he went off his line, spread himself, made him, made, you know, he didn't have anywhere else to go, did it, striker? He could only try and take it round him, and he'd, 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 he'd done ex- exactly the right thing. So, yeah, brilliant. But, yeah, I mean, I'd sort of conceded to, to, to the fact that that was 1-0 when that were, when that were happening. <laughs> I mean, I conceded the fact fruit game. <laughs> I thought, fruit game as well, I think both Luke O'Connell and Herbie came were getting, like, a fair amount of fouls on them. And I'm surprised yeah. me that you know ref didn't clamp down it a bit sooner. Uh well some of the things going off at off at ball. Uh, you know, I'm not accusing out any player, but tends to be some kind of flailing arms going about and this other all of a sudden you see mm. look on floor and it's not like him to just go down on floor when no. you know he's not on ball kind of thing. And again, for, a, for some weird things been going off, but eventually Brett will come, Phillips. Um uh, a man again who I've always called a ghost, and I don't mean it disrespectful, but it just seems to be the right place at the right time. Pop up his work ethic and another great strike. Got to be 20 yards out, 25. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, great strike. Just outside area. Yeah, he's just on edge of D, isn't he? On, on outside of mm-hmm. area. And he just, um, he doesn't seem to catch it with loads of pace, but he just, because he, he took one touch and then he's hit it again. Um, but he just directed it perfectly. 
you know, to dive perfectly into bottom corner. And he's he's been what a signing he's been, Phillips. Really has. Mm-hmm. Um, it looked, you know, it looked a little bit lack of ma- uh, match sharpness and fitness when he first came because he'd not been getting a game for a while. But he's what a sign. You know, w- one of many brilliant signings that we've had in summer. But um, yeah, fantastic goal. And uh, I lost my voice on that first goal. <laughs> <laughs> my voice, got, got voice completely went with that first one. Um, <laughs> Oh, crackers! You went crackers in Ponte. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, it was. So yeah, yeah, great strike. After that, man, uh, Ryan, did you? Did, it sounds a bit uh, getting to a fine front, but did you sense any more goals in game, or were you thinking, no, Plymouth's going to come back a bit stronger here? Because I, I said to my son at the time, I went, just get ready for you know, kind of Alan Moore from Plymouth are going to get bombarded a bit here under pressure, but it didn't seem to happen as much. I think we. Bobby Thomas and uh, and Anderson and Kitchen and that since they handled it pretty well, but they are attacking for it because they made some changes yeah, didn't we then? Yeah, cause I didn't want to. I didn't want it to happen like we did against Derby, where we got obviously we were two goals in front at that point. But you know, just that just momentary lapse of concentration and and just hmm. let let him back into it. But we just seemed to set straight back into the game plan again and just they didn't really trouble us, did they, at all no. in that second half. No. They didn't they didn't give us any trouble whatsoever. They didn't really have apart from that one mistake by Mads, there were nothing that they created themselves that were clear goal scoring goal scoring opportunities. Um I you know I did think it would I know I said three one in a, a, in the preview but I said I thought it might be three one. I got the three goals a bit right. But <laughs> um <laughs> but it, because the first half was so tight, I thought it's going to be one. If we can get another, I think I think I think we'll win it. But mm. I thought we we're going to. I, I, to be honest, with you, I thought it was just going to be at one nil, and then we just seemed to just grow into the game. We really did. That you know, some of the football we played in that second half were, were, were brilliant, and we, you know, to go on and get the second and third goals. Um, just it was just my it was it was a magic afternoon. It felt like the derby game again, where the atmosphere yeah. was brilliant. It, the place were absolutely rocking. It was just it was just brilliant, mate. It's just like like um, we, we we have a WhatsApp group with with, with my mates, and because I live in Wakefield, a couple of my mates are, uh, are Leeds fans, the rest of us are Barnsley fans. And he, he, even he put it says, "What a time to be a Barnsley fan." <laughs> 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 Yesterday, and it's true. It is what a time to be a yeah. Barnsley fan. Even pyro's going off and all. What about that one? Pyro yeah. going off. So good times are back. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of I wanted that second goal because, like you said, there's one goal in it, and probably even two two goals in it now. You always know it's cagey. I mean, I said two one, so I got three goals, but it, my mine was spread about like. But I take three notes all day <laughs> long. Uh, and yeah, Captain Mads gained a goal. Um, took it well and all, and you could see relief and joy on his, on his face and that. And I think. Yeah, fair play to him. Um, I, it's always nice seeing chipping me a goal because it's pleasing to see as well. It's three different goal scorers yet again. So yeah, Mads popped up and scored from uh, from you know with Edda, and then I get onto the third goal. What a penalty! I thought it was. It looked a penalty. Mm. It looked a penalty. It certainly looked when I watched highlights last night on ITV. Again, it looks. It, it definitely looks a penalty. I mean, it didn't yeah. matter. It, it didn't matter in the end, but it's got to. No, say, are no. we ever going to get? Are we ever going to get a penalty this season? That's right. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, <laughs> we're never going to get one. There must be. There must be a conspiracy against not getting back penalties to Barnes. They must have. They must have a. They must have a, a sweepstake in referees union. Um, but I mean, it end. What a strike by Cadden. I mean, to get that up and over at wall. Um, sweet, wasn't it? And into the top corner, and he didn't hit it hard, neither did he. It was such a sweet strike. He's just he's hit it, and it were curling, it dipping away from key keepers. Mile, if he's watching highlights, keepers miles off it. He's yeah. miles away. Um, my son's a goalkeeper, and he said he said he he, he he got his positioning wrong. Keeper, he said he were far too far over that side, and he said it, he left that gap there. So it, and Cadden's obviously exploited it. So uh, you can see he's miles off it, and. Um, on a yeah, keeper, did you see Ishted in, in in eighth, crouched down? Do you see that? Ishted when uh, no. Callum, oh yeah. It, so it's like, you know, you could, I've seen highlights and all for some on social media and I'm keeping an eye on I'm thinking he's probably taking it all in this Ishted. So it's like watching and watching. As soon as it went in, it's like up it has going, Wah! I'm thinking, get that last signed up because you could, I, I suppose we, he what kind of position in, in eighth, he could more or less see where it were going to go. So everyone's yeah. like watching, watching, watching. And if it's on Twitter, and I don't always put it on, but it's more or less sat straight behind goal. And like you said, it, it wasn't so much power, it was about placement. And 
he said, yeah. what he said keep back, keep a well, like a fair distance away from it. Yeah, yeah, fair distance away from diving. I think he could just say it were perfectly placed, wasn't it? But usually free kicks at that distance are much harder to get up and over. But what a yeah. what, what a what a sweet left foot that is. He's again, Cadden, another great signing from summer, really getting it, you know, really in his stride in it, and. Um, yeah, I, I like. I really do like his stead. I think. Have you seen one where he's winding Derby fans up when we scored? When Luke Thomas scored fourth one. Yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. Turned around and gives yeah. it. Because he must have been giving Class. him flack all that half, and he just turned around and gives it him all this. So. <laughs> Class, so, Class stuff in it. And he's, he's a character, isn't he? He's a character, um, and a great goalkeeper to boot. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I hope we sign him. Only, only, only minor thing I can think of. Only minor worry I've got is that he's performing so well for Barnsley at the moment when he becomes a free agent will a championship mm. club be coming for him with more brass I mean we may well be a championship club um, I'm, I'm bloody hoping so um, mm. but will will a, will a championship club come you know a bigger championship club coming for him with more brass um, mm. will Luton offer him a new contract to, or, or will he want to go back to Luton he's, there's a lot of things up in air with him being a free agent isn't there but Mm. Uh, if, I, I, I hope we can get him because I think he's he's just he, you know some players just fit clubs don't they and he just seems to be that person and I think he gets mm. in front of Collins when Collins is fit that minute on his form yeah. on his current form yeah. I don't think yeah. he, he's he's been the best goalkeeper we've had this season and, and that's not against Brad because Brad's a great goalkeeper but I think it's just a little bit better I, I was playing yeah good call about that as well and he, I've said it before, and it it reminds me similar to a situation about Luke Steele when years ago, when you know, uh, went out injured and we got Luke Steele in an emergency loan, went yeah. first game away at Liverpool in FA Cup, and then from then on, yeah. he went on to do all like that. And I'm thinking if we can mirror more or less, with you know that kind of transition. I mean, if he's just enjoying his football and his, his loving life at Barnsley, then. You know, it might be down to I know there's agents and that involved and all that kind of stuff. But if he's enjoying life at Barnsley and it's a permanent move for him and he's got some kind of foundation and solidity and he can see what's happening with Duff and you know what they wanted to do at club, I'm hoping that that's enough to sell to player. Um, I get it's about money and this other and yeah, 100 percent. But of course, it is you're about careers and that. But at the end of the day, is he? Now wanting in his stage of career to like say, yeah, I want to settle down for a three, four year at a specific club, see what yeah. happens from there. And I'm hoping so. Like what you said, there, Ryan, there's someone at the back of your mind just thinking, oh, I hope someone must nip in and say, yeah, we can offer you X, Y, Z. And see lad back on bench again because I think he's better than that. I think he's had it too long at uh, Lowell I think exactly. he's enjoying it, being at first team at Spotlight and sometimes better Devin you know, or Devin you don't. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'd like to see he stood at, at Barnes are permanent. <clears throat> I think first team. I think first team football is a massive pull, isn't it? And he knows he's getting that at Barnes, don't he? And you know, mm. and if he comes to us, you know, and we do cash in, you know, we do cash in on Collins, um, which I think we could, you know, we could pull a fair, a, a decent transfer fee for him, and then get Isted on on a free, and he's going to get first team football. You, you, you know, if there is that, that there's more. Like I said earlier about more money, but he's not been getting first team football, has he? At, mm. at championship clubs and he has he has at Barnsley he's been getting a lot of first team football uh, and he seems to be really enjoying his football with us so that's my thing isn't it fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah yeah so I mean another win uh, uh, a week and maybe even better uh, go out to Wickham away so we've got a week off so I'll be well players and back and rest for sore limbs and stuff because I've had a pretty pretty yeah. tough week haven't we you know to be fair and that like uh, probably from the training into a bit of indoor training with weather as well with snow on pitch and that so we've been limited so I think a well deserved rest build up for what we can game. Um Absolutely. that's gonna be another test in its sun Ryan that one isn't it? Yeah good side out they're very strong at home. Um I think you know they've had a couple of they've had a couple of losses haven't they since since Gareth Ainsworth went which you know I did I did feel for him to be fair because he's been there for so long done such a good job. Mm. Um but obviously lower of playing for his old you know his old club and his club that he loved QPR were a bit too much for him so I did feel sorry for Wickham there because he, he seems a bit harsh on fans but um, they're a good side they got beat yesterday didn't they by Burton um, yeah yeah. so that puts nine points between us and them I think that's pretty much playoff secured isn't it I think what all we need to be looking at now is that second spot yeah um, cool. yeah but yeah, the, 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 it'll be a tough test. But there's not—I don't think there's as much pressure on that game now, um, you know, as as there has been. As 
they could have potentially been when you looked at the uh, at the league status because they just won't go away, would they? I mean, but it about a seven or eight game winning streak they went on with them. They said were, to know, be hanging on all the time, didn't it? Yeah. Well, they were always three points behind us, weren't they? They won't go away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's testament to the job that Ainsworth were doing there. But um, now there's that nine point gap. I don't think there's as much pressure on that on that game now. Um, obviously, we still need to get as many. You know, still need to get three points to stay in because last thing we want to do is really slip up at Wickham after we've mm. just got them points back on uh, Plymouth on second place and then Plymouth going you know because they've got a pretty you know they've got a decent running now of Plymouth <clears throat> you know we don't want to slip up on them guys do we so um, yeah definitely a, definitely a test mate definitely a test a test a test one we'll look forward to uh, Brian as always it's been a pleasure mate I'll let you get on the rest of your day I know you've got a busy footballing day in front of you mate so uh Good luck with that. Enjoy your coffee. Uh, it's always been a pleasure to talk to you. I'll probably get you on some time a week for a, a weekend preview as well, mate, if you're available. So yeah, absolutely. Appreciate that. Uh, please like, subscribe and share. Uh, let us know your comments. Man at match. I don't know. We'll just close on that like. Man at match for you, Ryan. I mean, for me, for a few players in it, I'm just going to go. It's an item, but I'm going to go with Herbie Kane. Yeah, I think it, it was a good choice, Neil. It was a good choice. I thought he had a great game. Up until he'd gone off, Philip, I actually said Phillips. So I was saying to me Sunday when he yeah. came, I said, I think, he, I think he's mad at matching. But I think there were argument for Mads as well. So I, apart from that mistake he made, I thought he had a great game, Mads. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think Herbie Kane's a, a, a good shout. I think it was a good shout from um, from club on, 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 on um, during the match as well. So. We'll I think it's getting harder and harder week by week, which is a good thing because there's that many players not <laughs> in for a mention, isn't it? So it's a good thing that rather than struggling to get one, he was struggling to get one for the right reason. Yeah. <clears throat> there's nobody, there's nobody struggling. That side, that that first eleven mm. that we've got at minute seems to be absolutely bang on. Everyone seems to be in really good form. There's goals coming mm. from all over the pitch. It's 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 wonderful to see, and like you say, what a great position to be in where you're struggling to find out who's man at match for the, for the right reason. Yeah, well, mate, continue. <laughs> exactly. exactly, exactly. Right, please like, subscribe, and share. Let us know your thoughts below. Uh, always interesting to know your man at match and see how your take on uh, game how it went. Uh, have a good rest of your e- uh, evening, but it'll be a weekend. Good rest of the week, and uh, we'll catch you up soon before the weekend game. One thing left to say, you Reds.